come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels, O come let us adore him, O come let us adore tried to hide you and steal you away death tried to keep you inside of the grave the enemy fought you he tried but he lost you cannot be stopped when we cried for freedom you tore down the walls the weight of our burdens you carried it all our fears and failures hang dead on the cross you cannot be stopped mover of mountains breaker of chains jesus sits triumphs over the grave sing hallelujah the battle is won nothing can stand on your victory and shout out your praise miracle maker you're mighty to save awesome and proud can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing
nothing that can stop our God. There is nothing. There is nothing. Oh, you cannot be There's nothing that can stop our oh, God. Stop. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There is nothing.
Hey, man, that was good music, and man, oh man, it's good to see Children's Church going on, and I know y'all are praying, too, that we can get everything going again like we had it, praying for God to bring a swift end to this stuff. Well, a pastor named Eric Hulstrand from Benford, North Carolina, no, North Dakota, sorry, well, I'm not starting off very good, from Benford, North Dakota, told a story about something that happened in his worship time. He said that while he was preaching, there was an elderly lady in his congregation named Mary, and she passed out. And after she passed out, she hit her head on the corner of the pew. And an EMT in the congregation called for an ambulance. And still unconscious, they got her strapped in, and they were about to uh, take her out, and she woke up. And she motioned for her daughter to come up close to her. And the daughter leaned down close to her mother's mouth so she could hear what her mom said. Pastor said he was thinking these, these might be like her final words to her daughter or something like that. And here's what he heard. My offering is in my purse. Now, a question I have for you. Would you be suspicious that that lady would steal from you? Not likely. If you have somebody that cares enough to make sure that her offering is given to her church, this is not really likely somebody that would steal from you. Matter of fact, wouldn't you say she's probably trustworthy and maybe generous? Would you say that she would be two steps above stealing? One step above stealing would be honest. Another step above stealing would be generous. Thou shalt not steal is the commandment we're looking at today from Exodus 20, 15. Uh, you probably don't really need to look it up. You could probably quote it. It's one of the easy ones. Thou shalt not steal. Or like other translations, you will not steal. In other words, you know, don't take something that doesn't belong to you. But listen to how conversion is described in the life of conversion that, that uh, is expected in God's Word in the New Testament. Because when a person places his or her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says in John chapter 7, they receive the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, they receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit baptizes them into the body of Jesus Christ. So you have the Spirit of God Almighty whose very description is love living in you. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28, here's what Paul says to Christians. I want you to see two steps, two steps above stealing here. He who steals must steal no longer, but rather he must labor. One step above, go get a job. <laughs> he who steals must steal no longer, but he must labor, one step up, performing with his own hands what is good, so that he will have something to share with one who has need. Not only don't steal anymore, but go get a job and go get a job so you can give. Uh, totally different from that kind of a lifestyle. It ought to be said of a Christian, oh man, if you're going to hire anybody, hire a Christian. If you're going to do a business with anybody, do business with a Christian. It ought to be said of Christians, man, those folks... Those folks love people. Those folks are generous, should be said of us. What about conversion? I think two steps above stealing is very obvious in the life of Zacchaeus. Luke chapter 19, verses 8 and 9, about the conversion of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, <clears throat> Behold, Lord, half of my possessions I will give to the poor. This was a man who defrauded people and stole from people. And now half of my possessions I give to the poor. And if I've defrauded anyone of anything, I'll give back four times as much. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house. This is a saved man. I mean, not only is he going to give back what he stole, but he's going to give back four times as much as he defrauded from people. And in addition to that, He's going to go two steps above stealing, and he is going to sell half of his goods and give to the poor. It should be said of you and me, uh, you can trust that person. 
You can trust that person absolutely. And it should be said of you and me, not only can you trust that person, you can depend on that person to give sacrificially and, and to do above and beyond the call of duty. And it can be said very much of people in a lot of churches. You know, in, in, in my years as a pastor, this is church number six. And frankly, I would love for this to be the final. I don't want God to move me. And if God tells me, you got to go to Punky Bow, Oklahoma, all right, God, I'll do that, you know. Or text, if it was Texas, I'd say, are you sure this is God? You know, but anyway, I mean, what, you know, but I think this is, this is it. And, but, and, but here's my point. Not every church I've been in has been like this one. You know, when we got chairs and it was time to get rid of the pews, we didn't sell the pews. We gave away the pews. That's good. That's what churches are all about. I will not mention names or anything like that, but I was in a church where the pews were sold and where uh, they took one pew cushion more than they should have taken, and I was supposed to chase that other church down and get that cushion back. Something wrong with that, folks. May I say something good about First Baptist Church of Kellyville? There's a lot of good things to say about First Baptist Kellyville. That's where I left to come here. A bunch of us got together, a bunch of men got together, and we were going to go watch Tulsa play SMU. And so we bought tickets ahead of time, and then the men that wanted to go would reimburse the church for the price of the ticket. Well, we wound up with more tickets than we actually had guys. We had extra tickets that the church had already bought. We went to the football game with extra tickets to give away, not to sell, to give away. And I, can, I can't tell you the joy that I had when I would see some father and son holding up a sign saying, need tickets, need tickets, and to walk up to them and say, you know, we're a bunch of men from a Baptist church in Kellyville, and we have extra tickets. Would you like some? Sure. How much? Nothing. Just want to give them to you in Jesus' name. You know, there was, I think I had two tickets left. I think I, it was, you know, my memory's not all that good on uh, details on this, but I, I know that I had two tickets left over, and there's a father and son, and they're talking to, the, to a scalper. And the father, I hear the father say, do you have change for a hundred? And I walked up to that father and I said, we've got two tickets we want to give you from First Baptist Kellyville for free. Wow. Thanks. And you know, the scalper was even grateful. While I was walking away, he said, thanks a lot, buddy. It made me feel good. Just all through, you know. That's a blessing. It's wonderful. And, you know, if you want to go three steps above, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, God loves a cheerful giver. A cheerful giver. Somebody that doesn't just give sacrificially, but enjoys giving. When Paul wrote about the Corinthian, I mean, excuse me, about the Macedonian church when he wrote 2 Corinthians and he said, the believers in Macedonia took up an offering for the famine that's going forth in, Ju in Judea, it says they had poverty and that they gave sacrificially and they had joy. They enjoyed giving to the believers in Judea. And so here's my question for you. You know, where are you along that spectrum? I, I'm not naive to the point that I don't understand that there are people that come to church that steal. Matter of fact, on two separate occasions, I've had to let staff members go because they stole from the church. So, I mean, hey, you might be at that level. I seriously doubt it. I mean, I'm, I, there's nobody, promise Scout's Honor, I promise there's nobody I suspect in First Baptist Pawnee, you know, of being a thief. But it could be, you know, that you're on that level. Or it could be that you're on the level of, hey, I'm responsible and uh, I, I, I've got a job and I pay my bills. Uh, you know, I don't owe anything to anybody. The, God's word says, owe nothing to anybody except to love one another. Uh, Proverbs 3.28, 
Don't say to your neighbor, come back, and tomorrow I'll give it, if you have it with you. You know? In James chapter 5, it speaks about rich landowners, and it says, the cry of those who mowed your fields that you have withheld wages has come up to heaven. You know? So there are different forms of stealing, aren't there? <clears throat> you don't tell the truth about the car you're trading in. <clears throat> you don't tell the truth on your taxes. Excuse me, <clears throat> I should have. Maybe I'll learn by the time I'm 80. There are different ways of stealing, <clears throat> but maybe you're above that. Maybe you're at the level where, hey, I pay my bills. I tell the truth about buying and selling and things like that. Maybe you're at that level. <clears throat> or are you at the level where you're giving sacrificially? Or are you at the level where you're giving hilariously? That's the word that's actually used for cheerful giver. So, like Scrooge, after he was converted. He's laughing while he's buying this turkey that's as big as the kid that goes after it because he wants to give it to Bob Cratchit's family. There is a joy that comes from giving sacrificially. And that joy comes from being yielded to the Spirit of God. God loves a cheerful giver because God is a cheerful giver. And we show the very character of the Lord Jesus Christ when we are cheer cheerful givers. So far above stealing that a believer ought not to even think about cheating on his income taxes or lying about the car that he's trading in or something along that line. Or or borrowing something and telling himself he's going to pay it back and he doesn't. Or buying on consumer credit, understanding that he probably won't be able to pay it back. He won't even think about that. Because he's on the level to where he's not even thinking about what he can get out of life. He's thinking about who can I bless. You see, the Bible says that that's actually what, what our possessions are. We are stewards of them. And as stewards, we're responsible for doing God's will with those things. And so the money that you have or don't have, <laughs> you're a steward of that. God Almighty has you as his servant. And he's saying, I have people that I want to bless, and you're the hands by which I bless those people. And you and I ought to report for duty every day where we're in the position where we say, okay, Lord, here we go. What do you want me to do today? Who do you want me to bless today? That's the kind of attitude that we're talking about. So, I'm going to ask the band to come and get ready for a time of meditation. And I'm going to ask you to ask God where you are on this spectrum from stealing all the way to hilarious giving. Are you honest? in your buying and selling. Are you a step above honest <clears throat> to the point of being generous? Are you a step above generous to being cheerfully generous? And you see, the real question is this. Do you love people more than you love money? And if the answer is no, how do you get there? Well, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, that Christianity is faith working through love. By faith, you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And His Spirit comes to dwell within you. And if you as a believer yield to the control of His Holy Spirit, to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ loves people through you. You become His vessel for him to do his wonderful work through. You become his instrument in his hands, it says in Romans chapter 6. And so the answer for me is, on my own, John Coker is selfish. On my own, John Coker wants his way. On, on my own, I, I am not a loving, generous, hilarious giver. But when I yield myself to the control of God, the very life of Jesus flows through me. And not only do I give, I like it. 
Let's have some time of meditation. I'll be in the room if somebody would like to come talk. God bless you.